What is it like to fly for 15 hours in Singapore business class with an eight month old baby? In this video, I will show you everything that went right, wrong, and everything else that happened during our flight. And if you're interested in flying business class with your family and children, I will show you at the end of this video how I booked this flight with just credit card points and how we're able to get the bulkhead seats for the extra leg room and the bassinet. If you're new to this channel, I'm Andy, and I'm chronicling our family's move from San Francisco to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The reason for the trip is so we can scope out neighborhoods in KL that we might want to live in. This is our first time flying Singapore Airlines business class, and I was very excited. I've seen so much content about how amazing the experience is, from the seats to the service, to the food. I couldn't wait to get on this flight. But first, go and check it. Checking in and immigration is always kind of interesting for our family because we all travel on different passports. I have a Chinese passport, my wife is Australian, and our kids are American. It does take longer to process. However, the confused look on the agent's faces when we hand over the passports is priceless. After security, we headed to the United Polaris Lounge because Singapore Airlines doesn't have their own lounge at SFO. The lounge is located right past security. As the dad, it's my job to get the food and drinks for the family while my wife stays with the kid. So I walked down the corridor to the food area and that's when I realized this lounge is huge. It literally takes about two minutes to go from one end of the lounge to the other. In addition, this lounge has a sit down restaurant at the very end. It has a wait list and we didn't have time for it, but next time we'll try to take advantage of that perk. The food offering was pretty basic. I had the eggs, bacon, sausage, typical breakfast food. I returned with two plates of food and I grabbed two glasses of champagne. It's a bit early in the day to drink, but we're starting a vacation early, so let's celebrate. It was right after this that our daughter had a poo explosion. Those who are parents know exactly what I'm talking about. Luckily, the Polaris Lounge has lots of private bathrooms, so I was able to take her into a bathroom, wash her off, and clean her up. That's one benefit of flying business class is private bathrooms. I could not imagine trying to clean her up in a public bathroom while their passengers just walking through. We're also lucky that she didn't have the explosion after we got on the plane because that would be a nightmare to try to clean up in an airplane bathroom. After we finished our food, we headed to the gate to board. Whenever we're flying, we gate check our stroller. It's an upper baby cruise, so it comes apart in two pieces, the seat and the stroller. The seat we put in a separate seat bag, so that way it doesn't get damaged or dirty during transit. The stroller itself is pretty sturdy, so we just let that fly. Now it's time to enjoy business class. This is where the second disaster happened. While going through TSA, an agent opened up a container of formula, but didn't close it properly. So by the time I went for it, it spilled all over the bag and it was just a mess everywhere. I tried to clean it up with white wipes, but then it just started getting clumpy and sticking to everything. Luckily, the flight attendant saw me struggling and brought over wet towels and a bag for the dirty towels. So I was able to clean it up fairly okay. That's another huge difference between flying economy and business is the quality of service. The flight attendants are there to help you with whatever you need. I can only imagine being in economy and having to clean up all that mess by myself. All right, time for a tour of the seat. We start with a big screen that has all the movies. Then we have this little mirror to check yourself out. And then space for your feet. Bags go underneath, then more bags go under there. And so that's the baby bag, that's my bag. And there's space for shoes, a corner. Um, because it's a bassinet seat, we get extra space instead of like the angle footwell of foot other seats. Comes with the pillow, blankets, here's the slippers, eye mask, the menus, this is the table. Let's all open later. Um, headphones and water, the remote control, little charging ports, reading light, all space to store books and other stuff, in our case, bottles. And later on, they're going to set up this to be a line flat seat. But you can see it from the thing, that's window seat. As you can see, there's a ton of space here in the seat. Plenty for our bags and baby gear and the baby. Once we're seated, the flight attendants brought over 
a welcome guava juice and hot towels to freshen up. So if you're traveling with a partner and you have the two middle seats and you have this divider, which can open. Hi. And she has her own, own little seatbelt. It attaches to the mama seatbelt. Later on, they'll set up the bassinet. Our daughter did not fuss at all during the takeoff, which is a pleasant surprise because often kids have issues with air pressure. Then shortly after takeoff, the flight attendant came by to install the bassinet. Mama. Hey. Hi. Hi. How's she doing the bassinet? She's going to sleep. She was able to fall asleep fairly quickly. So far, flying with her has been smooth, besides the poo explosion. Once we were in the air for about an hour or so, they started the food service. Singapore Airlines Business Class has a special program called Book the Cook, which lets you reserve dishes for your flight. You have to reserve them ahead of time because they're limited quantities, and they have to prepare them before the flight. On this flight, there are two meals, and for one, I ordered the Chilean sea bass, and for the other, I ordered the baked lobster. So, looking forward to both of these. First course is a salad topped with sliced walnuts. This is the main course, and I got the sea bass with a Suntory whiskey on the rocks. And then Alicia got an Indian dish with a white one. And Aria is sleeping. Yay. Now we have dessert, That's some fresh fruit, and ice cream. The chocolate stick. As much as I was looking forward to the Singapore Airlines food, I was a little disappointed with this one. The salad was nice and refreshing. The Chilean sea bass was great, well cooked, flavorful, but the side dishes were just a bit bland. They could have used more seasoning or texture or something to make it a little more special. The desserts were nice, the fruits were sweet and fresh, and there was ice cream. After the meal, you can have the flight attendant turn your seat into a bed. On Singapore Airlines, the flight attendant have to do this because there are moving parts that they rather you not handle yourself. And I have to say the seat is OMG huge. There's so much room in the seat. It was almost like a full side bed. My wife can lie down on it and had the baby next to her and had plenty of space. I could be sitting watching a movie and have the baby by my feet and she couldn't crawl around. Also, because we're sitting next to each other, we can pass the baby back and forth so we can take our turns with our meals. My wife has no issues falling asleep on planes, but I cannot sleep. So I take this chance to catch up on movies. I think I watched five movies on this flight. While enjoying one of the movies, I ordered a bottle of sake and some popcorn. And that's one great thing about business class is you can order drinks and snacks anytime you want. A couple of movies later, it was time for the next meal. This one was the baked lobster. The duck salad that came with it was very nice. The baked lobster was great. It's not a full lobster tail. It is lobster meat that is baked into the shell, but very tasty. The potatoes were well cooked and well seasoned. Overall, a much more satisfying meal compared to the sea bass. Then after another movie, I got hungry again. And this time I ordered the fish kanji. And guess what? This was my favorite meal on the flight. I have a thing for kanji since I grew up with it as a kid, but it was just so tasty and heartwarming. And before you know it, we were landing in Singapore. It's like 15 hours just went away. Our flight with the baby went smooth. She didn't cry at all other than when she was hungry or needed a change. And she only cried a bit when we had to wake her up for the landing because during takeoff and landing and when there's turbulence, you're supposed to have the baby outside the bassinet. I have to thank all of the Singapore Airlines flight attendants because they went above and beyond during this flight. Anytime we needed warm water for bottles, a snack or help with anything, they were there immediately willing to help. I now know what people are talking about when they mention Singapore Airlines service, and we're going to be repeat customers for sure. If you want to know how to book this flight for your family, here's what I did. I booked this flight with Air Canada Aeroplan points because they offer the best redemption for Singapore Airlines business class. A one-way NASA flight from SFO to Singapore is 87,500 points on Air Canada. And because we're heading on to Kuala Lumpur, I spent 5,000 more points to add a stopover in Singapore. A stopover is essentially a layover that's more than 24 hours. Because we wanted to spend five days in Singapore, we made a five-day stopover. And because it's on the same itinerary, 
the flight from Singapore to Kuala Lumpur, it's also the business class. You should watch our video about that flight because Kuala Lumpur takes business class service to another level. So altogether, I paid 185,000 airplane points, which I transferred over from Chase Ultimate Rewards. I was also able to take advantage of a 30% transfer bonus, which means that I only needed 143,000 points total for this book. That is an amazing deal to fly on one of the best business class products in the world. Now you may wonder, what about the baby? I had to call up Aeroplan, not Air Canada, and tell them that we're flying with a baby and to add her to our itinerary. Once she was added and ticketed, then I called Singapore Airlines and requested the bassinet seat or the bulkhead seat. These are the seats that are in the front of the cabin that had the additional legroom that the other seats in the back do not enjoy. And you can only reserve these seats if you're flying with a baby. So after a phone call, we had our bulkhead seats with the bassinet secured for our travel which was the best decision because you have so much more space in those seats. Thank you all for watching this video. And please let me know what you think of Singapore Airlines and their business class product. And if you want to follow our journey moving from San Francisco to Kuala Lumpur, you should watch this video where I explain how we decided on Malaysia as our destination. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.